All right, so we're here. It's Friday. It's 5 p.m. I'm not gonna be able to stream SmackDown, which uh, it, it's fine. I'm going to a restaurant anyway, so. Uh, but I'm not gonna stream SmackDown. But I am still recording this video, so why not, right? So this is the sixth. Yeah, the sixth album from Coldplay. I almost said fifth. The sixth album from Coldplay after uh, released in 2014. So, yeah, uh, how we usually do these types of album reviews, because I haven't done this one in quite a bit, is that I go over all the songs and I rank all of them and give the full album a rating at the end of it. So, yeah, starting off with Always In My Head just gives you that ambient, somber feeling to start off the album. Pretty good start to it, not gonna lie. Not really much lyrically, like, it's not bad. Ly ly lyrically, it's not bad, it's just... There's just not much there. The sound is just very slow and effective. I'm I'm gonna give it a four point three out of five. I liked it. I really liked it as the opener. So, yeah, with the ominous voices at the start of it and then the instrumental kicking in like a, at least a minute in, it's a pretty good song to start off. So yeah. Uh, next up is Magic. Not as not really lead single material, but I don't think really anything else from this album is. So I'm just gonna let it slide for there. Uh, Magic, unironically, is the worst song on the album, in my opinion. It's just, no disrespect to it, but, like, it's just not there for me, in my opinion. The video is awesome. The music video is amazing, in my opinion. But the entire song, I just don't really have it. I just don't really click well with it. I'm gonna give it a 3.5 out of 5. So, yeah. Third song was Ink. Ink is, a uh, honestly, a pretty nice, uh, acoustic song, in my opinion. Or mostly acoustic. It starts off with this kind of really nice drum beat that sounds like popping and all that. Um, really nice drum beat to start off the song. The w the way Chris sings, I think, with this song, it's just one of the most. Emo Actually, it's not. It's not even top three in most emotional ways of singing the song. So, and, mo and it's not even top three in most emotional ways that Chris sings this album. But man, vocalization he uses for this album is pretty cool. There, uh, I like the song. I have no idea what to say about it. I'm gonna give it a four point two out of five because that's what I have it. That's what I have written down here. But yeah, there's ink. So, uh, the fourth song is True Love. True Love is basically the delusion that people have after some sort of breakup or rejection or something, or divorce. It's just that delusion, which, that lyrically, it just, basically, it hits you the hardest with that. Um, the delusion, I'm just saying that, because in, in the lyrics, it's like, tell me you love me, if you don't, then lie to me. Which, it, it just really hits right in the feels right there. Um... With the way the how intimate the song was, especially at the end with that guitar riff, it was just pretty nice. It's a good song, I guess, but not really one of my favorites on this album. I'm gonna give it a three point eight out of five. I'm really rambling on this album. I apologize in advance. Holy crap! And the fifth song is Midnight. Midnight is really just that very calm. It's just very calm, but very just. Like, one of the most emotional songs there, because it, I think it's that this song is at the point where you just start with the hopelessness feeling and all that. I don't know. I really like Midnight. Midnight is just one of the most... It's one of the most unique Coldplay songs I've ever heard. Um, I like it. Not many people do, but I like it. I'm going to give it a 4.5 out of 5, so yeah. Next song is the second worst off the album. Not really. It's not even bad. Just hold on. Another's Arms. It just really a lot of missed opportunities with this song. Just the live version of this. The live version of Another's Arms. It just, it, you can hear a lot more of the instrumental with it. With the album version, it's more muted and all that. So, I just like the live version better. I feel like the way the song sounds here, it just, I didn't like this version all too much because like, it had more, it, it could have done more with the instrumental and all that, it just wasn't there, it was, it felt muted too, the guitar solo was way too quiet, um, the synths in the background were pretty cool, but like, overall the song, it just felt kind of flat, not gonna lie to you, I'm gonna give it a 3.5 out of 5, I liked it lyrically, it, it hits like crazy, like, in a sad way, but... Like, instrumentally, it really lacked a good amount. So I'm going to give it a 3.5 out of 5. That's my generous rating. Well, that's kind of true, not going to lie. I, I still like the song a good amount, but... Mm. Next one is definitely another very, very emotional song off his album. It's called Oceans. This one is just Chris singing this acoustic song right here. And he's just singing the way his vocalization ranges here. It's just... 
It's basically not a higher pitch, or I would say his range is in a higher uh, section of his voice. What am I saying? I'm, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. But, damn, this one, it just makes it made me cry on the first lesson ever. Not and It doesn't make me cry anymore because I've heard it a bunch, but it just really, I don't know, I just can't. This is, in my opinion, this is the saddest song off the album. It's the most intimate. It's the most... It feels like it's the most personal, which I have no idea why, because it's really not. Well, at least I don't think it is. <laughs> I don't know. And then at the end where it just finishes, you can just hear these ominous sounds and the oceans crashing in the background. It gives you this most relaxing experience. I'm going to give this song a 5 out of 5. It gives you the most relaxing experience. Kind of kind of a relaxing experience, not going to lie. This song can put me to bed. No, I don't know why. I'm not saying it's boring, but I'm just saying it's kind of, it, it has that calmness. And yeah, that ending is pretty cool, too. It's kind of soothing to just hear the oceans in the background. Um, and then it just fades in right into the sky full of stars. And this song is the most upbeat and energetic off the album. This song makes you really want to get up and dance. Not gonna lie. I suck at dancing. So I'm not, I'm there, There's no way that's going to happen for me. It just makes you feel more energetic and all that after this entire album, which is mostly emotional, <clears throat> emotional song after emotional song after emotional song. No, nothing from this album really got the most upbeat tune to it, except for sky full of stars. And that's really... Mentally, this is a healing song. That's one thing. And I just love it. It's just a sky full of stars. Especially, especially, ugh, especially in a live setting. This song really... This is the, this really should be the closer for all Coldplay shows. At least in my opinion. Because really, why shouldn't it be? It's just... I don't know. But this just gives you the biggest like energetic feeling of all time. In my opinion. This song is the best for live settings. I'm going to give it a 4.5 out of 5. I, I, I really love this guy full of stars. So, yeah. And the final song is O, oh, or two hidden tracks at the same time, Fly On and O. Oh, but I'm going to combine it for this one because I feel like they work together as one song. So, yeah. It starts off with Fly On. Fly On is uh, a really beautiful piano melody right here. Um, it's just the way it's the way it is. It's just, I don't want to say rejuvenation. I have no idea why. I, I, I want to say it, but I feel like it, that, that's the long term. I feel like this is the... I feel like for most of his songs, it was the hopelessness. And with the Sky Full of Stars, it was the healing. And with Fly On and Oh, it's just the... I don't know how to say it. I don't know how to say it. I don't know how to say it. It's just kind of the rehabilitation, I guess. I have no idea. But it, it, I, it's, an excellent, it's an excellent closer, in my opinion. I really loved it a lot. Then Fly On ends. It goes to Oh, the actual track. The title of this track, um, it basically loops back to the start of Always In My Head, which I think is a nice touch. You had that with Viva La Vida. Uh, what, other, what other album did you have that in? Nothing. Okay, never mind. But it basically looped back to the start of the album, which it has happened before. But overall, this song is just really, really nice, in my opinion. Well, with O, oh, this has more of a kind of a bass riff. Or you can hear kind of a bass lick right there. In the middle O, and then at the end, you can just hear the words, like, very eerie, very ominous, don't ever let go. They're just re being repeated four times, and then the song comes to an end, ending the album. I'm going to give O a 5 out of 5. I've had to rank all these songs. O and Ocean's take number 1 and 2 with 5 out of 5s, which is amazing. Midnight, is, uh, Midnight and the Sky Full of Stars take 3 and 4 with 4.5 out of 5s, tied for that. Always in my head will go 5th. Ink will go six, true love seventh, and tied for the worst spot is magic in another's arms. Really, nothing too bad about this album. It just a good amount of stuff was just. It felt a little teensy, teensy bit flat. With the live versions, you can hear these a lot better. Overall, I like the album. I'm gonna give it a four point four out of five. I'm sorry if I messed up a lot of my wording during this. I it tends to happen a lot when I do these types of reviews, so I'm sorry. 4.4 out of 5 was what I'll give Ghost Stories, though. I liked it a lot. Thank you all for watching. Have a good day. Goodbye.